Hello, hello. It's Eva here and Joy. And today is, what day is it? Today is Travel Tuesday. And I'm here with an amazing guest for you. And I've got the music going to get you in the mood. And you know what that's in the mood for. That's to get you in the mood to travel. All right. All right. So today I have a special guest. And, um, oops, hold on. Today I have a special guest. And she is going to be sharing her Ghana adventure. And let me introduce her. Uh, Joy grew weary of con the constant rat race of living a life under someone else's control. While she loved her job and was able to improve people's health, she also wanted to have control over her own life. She wanted to be able to devote her time to nurturing her family, experiencing the beauty of the world through travel. Joy is a mother of two. She has a son, 14 and six. So welcome to the broadcast and welcome to Travel Tuesday, Joy. Good evening, or as they say in Tree, one of the many languages, native tongues in Ghana, Machu. Mach Machu, thank you, thank you. And welcome to the broadcast, Danita and Nana. Welcome. So, to, as I said, today we're going to be talking to Joy. And if, for those of you who don't know, my name is Eva Jordan Johnson. Um, my website is jordantravelenterprise.com, and my blog is travelwitheva.com. But I'll share a little bit about more about that with you later. But I want to take this time to just go ahead and get started to find out about Joy's Ghana adventure. How many of you, and you can put it in the comments, have had an interest in traveling to Africa? So if you do, put yes in the comments. And for the replay viewers, if you're watching this on the replay, put replays rock in the comments. So um, my question is, uh, we, oh, before I do that, if you do, would you like to say a little bit more about yourself? Um, you pretty much said it when you said that I had got to the place where um, even though I loved my job, I really wanted the freedom to be able to kind of move freely as I wanted to, and especially to be able to travel. Uh, since I've be gotten older, um, I definitely believe in the mantra of collecting moments and not things. And I believe, I love that I can do that through travel and explore different places, meet different people, and basically just enjoy God's green earth, so. Okay. So my my uh, question is to you. You said you were a mom. Yeah. Uh, how are you able to travel as a mom with kids? And what advice would you give to those who may not have a lot of finances or support to travel? Well, first I wanna say that it is possible to travel with children. I think we first need to settle in our mind that that's what we wanna do and not kind of already block our mind off that, oh, I have children and I can't travel. So um, it may take a little bit more planning. It may take a little bit more preparation, but we need to kind of settle within ourselves that even though we do have children, that desire to travel is still within us. And so we're going to make provision to try to travel as much as we can. And we also can take our children with us. A lot of times we feel that maybe we can't bring our children with us, but our children um, need to be able to experience the world um, just as us. And so I definitely would advise to kind of settle within your mind first that that's what you want to do and then kind of plan appropriately. All right. And I totally agree. Um, my children are grown up now. But one of the things that I really appreciated as they were growing up was to travel with to travel with them and to leave the United States and for them yes. to do something different. And I believe that as a result, it helped them to to really appreciate where they where they live and what they have. Uh, so I wholeheartedly agree with you on that. So my next question to, to you uh, is how do you document your trips and, and how do you share the, them with your children when you don't go with them? So I, um, again, because I have that mantra of collecting moments and not things, I tend to not be a big souvenir collect collector. 
Um, I do believe in certain pieces. And if they kind of speak to your soul, kind of speak to you, then definitely I would purchase something. But I usually like to document my travels with either video or photo. And then from there, I can kind of look up um, where I was and kind of the informational background behind it so that when I do come home to kind of share it with my children, then I have like some information about kind of where I was, the historical um, aspect of it and things like that. Well, great, great idea. And for those of you who don't know, Joy is a photographer. And so that is kind of a natural for her. Thank you. Very, very amateur, but yes, yeah, she, thank you. She's starting out, but watch out. Let's look out for Joy Medina, photographer. Uh, what, what has what has traveling, or well, how has traveling surprised you uh, about yourself? It definitely has surprised me in the way of knowing that it's given me kind of courage. We don't realize that travel is more than just travel. It is about opening and broadening your possibilities. And so when you are kind of closed in your environment, you tend to be more closed-minded in your thinking. And so what travel does is it opens your horizons, it broadens your horizons, and it shows you the many different cultures and many different things that kind of also open up your, um, your horizons as far as mentally. So it kind of surprised me because it let me know, you know what, if I can travel to someplace like England or someplace like Africa overseas, then I can do, what, what, what's to say I can't open up a business or what's to say I can't better myself in other areas of life. So I feel like traveling definitely broadens your horizons and definitely opens your, your mind to the possibilities in life in general. All right. My next question to you is, uh, what does a year of return, return mean? So well, everyone- Before you say that, um, and I'll be sharing a little bit more later, but Joy is featured in travelwitheva.com and she shares her uh, her adventure in Ghana uh, with the year of return. So that's why I'm asking the question, what is the year of return? So all of us are very much aware of what happened in history when it came to us as Black people being taken from our homeland, Africa, and brought to America in slave ships. And so in 2018, president, the president of Ghana announced a proclamation of a year of return. And it was basically inviting those Africans of the diaspora to basically return back to the motherland, to reconnect back to the motherland. And that was to take place in the year of 2019. So 2019 just is a drawing and a proclamation of those of us who have been basically ripped from the land to reconnect with our roots, to reconnect with the culture, to reconnect with basically the motherland. All right. So overall, how was, how was your trip different from your, your perception? What were, well, well, first of all, what were some of your perceptions before you went and how did that change as a result of you going to Ghana? You know what, Ava, we were surprised how much influence we have just been receiving from this country, just being in this country overall and how it affects us and how we view Africa. I've grown up with um, the perception and the understanding of Africa that it was a place that you did not want to visit. It was a place that you did not want to go. It was a place of starving children. It was a place of disease. And um, I believe that was done purposely to keep us from reconnecting back to our roots. And so it was a very strong perception because there were times, even my own family sat to say, would say, oh my God, are you going? Oh, I'm so scared for you. What's going to happen to you out there? I mean, there were times where I was going to get, um, I had to get my yellow fever vaccination. And when the nurse, um, saw that I was traveling to Ghana, she made a comment that, oh, are you taking your children over there? Oh my God, you know, what? You know, it was so it's a certain perception that we do have in this country. And I think it's just to keep us from reconnecting back to the land because trust and believe Eva, if you go over there, there are people from different tribes, nations, tongues, everything over there. So we have to be careful about misconceptions when we travel. Wow. 
And I was blessed to go to Ghana last year. So that's why I'm so excited to have you to come and share your experience. Yes. It was really, it was really a blessing and some place that I, I plan on returning. But this is not about me, it's about you. <laughs> So, um, and I know it definitely opened your eyes to a lot of things once you were able to get over there as oh, well. Oh, right? definitely, definitely. And it it, it brings your history because I remember um, after high school taking a course in in Black history and learning about you know Africa, the slave castles, and different things. And it's one thing to read it in a book to hear someone talk about it, okay. but it's another thing to experience it for yourself. Correct. Mm -hmm. So um, what would you say was the highlight of your trip? I honestly would have to say it was probably when I was standing on the coast at the slave castle and I, it was such a strange, strange and surreal feeling standing on the opposite side of the land that we were taken from and to be able to look out over the ocean and to see, man, we were taken from this land, a land that our ancestors thought that they would never see again. And not only that, but that their descendants would never see again. And so to, to be on that side of the shore, it, it was just a, a very surreal, it was a very surreal experience, a very so sombering and sobering experience mm -hmm. to be able kind of finally be back on the other side, the opposite side, looking literally towards the United States. You understand what I'm saying? So it was just a very, it was a very sobering experience. It kind of brings emotions just thinking about it. So kind of uh, piggybacking on that, what was your experience like visiting um, Cape Coast Cast Slave Castle? Wow. Um, I definitely say it was very extremely difficult to kind of to celebrate for a time of celebration. Mm -hmm. um, when I never will forget when we stepped into the first male dungeon and to look around it, first of all, it was below the captain's quarters. Mm -hmm. So the captain literally slept above kidnapped Africans basically people who were suffering and who were in, in, enslaved and trapped down there. So when we stepped into the dungeon, which was kind of underneath the ground, there was abs almost absolutely little to no light. And there were literally two slits at the top of the, at the top of the, the dungeon. And it almost felt enclosed. Like it was, the walls were closing in on you. And it was just a very, it's very hard to describe the feeling, mm -hmm. but it was it was also very surreal. And it was also very, just surreal, even surreal in the emphasis of how human beings can be treated in this manner. Mm -hmm. And so, and not only that, but how we could even survive, survive that because they weren't kept there for like a day or two. A lot of times they were kept there for months until mm -hmm. the slave ships were ready to take them over to America. And I, and I, I remember the, the orator telling us that they were kept there to basically mentally and spiritually break them down bit by bit. And so I remember there was this one time we went into one of the dungeons where those, um, let's say those Africans who maybe weren't acting accordingly, they were put in this dungeon to kind of punish them. And the dungeon was, the, the door was so low I went to, to duck my head to get under and I still knocked myself in the head because it was lower than what I even thought how low it was. Right. And so it just let me know that for them to be entrapped in this place, I can only imagine, we can only imagine what it did to their psyche. We can only imagine what it did to their spirits and their soul. But to even know that we survived all that, mm -hmm. And we still rose. We still, we still eventually year, hundreds of years later, still fought for freedom and still, and is still surviving to this day. To even for us, for you and I to sit here and discuss this today is that's, that's beyond words. It's beyond words. 
It's a miracle. Yeah. It's truly yeah. a miracle. It is. And it shows the strength of the people. It does. It really does. It really does. The strength of the people. people um, and you kind of have to, after having that type of experience, you kind of have to debrief and, and unpack because it's very emotional. Now, let's switch to what was one of, what were some of the joyous times of your trip? Some, I, I know one of them was when we went to the art center, the Jambi Art Center, and we got to play the drums. And we got to kind of get a little bit of historical background on African drums and why they were played, why they were made. And then we actually participated in a drumming session. And I thought that was really wonderful. We had an excellent, an excellent um, country host that uh, wanted us to really have a very authentic and real experience. Mm -hmm. And so that was a definitely joyous occasion. Another one was when we went to the treetops um, of the jungle and got to kind of walk across the treetops and stand above the trees. And it was just, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Now, Africa is really beautiful. It is. You know, I had that ex same ex that experience too. And I didn't realize that I would be up in the trees like that. <laughs> I was scared. It was I, was scared. I had to pray my way through. <laughs> <laughs> and not think about and not look down. And I'm usually I usually don't have a fear of heights, but that that was a very unique and amazing experience. So well, surprising, surprisingly enough, I do kind of have a fear of heights. And it that when we did the treetops, it was literally right after the slave castle. So we got to have that sombering experience, but then we got to go back into a joyous experience to be able to breathe to breathe, to take in that air, to be able to be above the treetops. It was, it was out, surprisingly, I was not scared, not one bit up in those trees. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what was your, um, oh, I asked you that question already. Okay. What was, what was, what's the benefit of using it? What was the benefit of using a travel agent for your Ghana trip? So, uh, my best friend had a lot of experience with world travels. Um, she, she was a flight attendant for Emirates Airlines. So she got to fly all over the world. And not only that, but she got to make a lot of connections with people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those connections, we as the newcomers and the new travelers did not have. And so she was able to, like I said, uh, set up something, uh, especially with our Ghan Ghanaian host, um, an authentic experience for us so that we could really taste Ghana, not just kind of like go to the beach or something like that, but we got to really experience the cultural, the heritage and everything like that. And so these were things that we probably wouldn't have been able to get if we kind of searched on our own. So I would definitely say it's the experience of world traveling and definitely the connections, the connections. And, and too, she even prepared us. She gave us some tree sayings, some native tongue sayings and things like that. So when we got over there, we'd, we'd be able to speak some of the native languages. Okay. So it was, it was really, it was really helpful to have someone already kind of set everything up. And all we had to do was basically pay our deposits, <laughs> go and enjoy ourselves. So. And it is good. Um, one thing that you said that one of the ways that she prepared you is to, uh, to learn if you're going to another um, country yes. to learn, key phrases in terms of saying hello, saying thank you. And that makes such a difference. It makes, and you'll be surprised how it, and I'm sure you experienced it. It makes it a did. smile. It oh, did. It did. When, we would that greet, language. when we would greet the people, they were like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and they would even teach us a little bit more. So it was really, that was really awesome. Okay. So do you, can you think of something that I didn't ask you that you wanted to share? And I, I, after that, I do have a question I want to ask, but go ahead. Okay. Just that I think we definitely, especially as Black people, need to be more open in going out and experiencing the world. Um, guys, there's a whole world waiting out there for us, um, waiting for us to experience it, waiting for us to live it. And we need to be able to step out of our comfort zone to do that. We need to be able to step out of what is familiar to do that. You know, you spoke about um, taking your children to travel with you. Funny enough, my mother, when I was younger, she always used to take us, made sure that she took her children on trips and outside of the country. And it was funny because when I was younger, I would complain about it. 
I would say, Ooh. Mom, yes. When I was a teenager, I would say, Mom, why can't we just stay stay at home in the home, our hometown like the rest of the people? <laughs> and you know, it was I was obviously speaking from a place of immaturity, but I looking back now, I appreciate those seeds that she planted in me because what she was trying to do was to open, to broaden our horizons, to yeah. open our, our eyes and our mind. And now, you know, look at me, I'm traveling, I'm doing those things and I'm producing that fruit from those seeds that were planted in me. So I definitely would say travel, get out there and explore the world. If not just for you, for also your children, your children need to see that there's a big and bright world out there. That is so true. And it, and it makes such a difference in your, in your children when they get to experience travel and even interact with other children who are from different countries. Um, it, it, it just, has it has so many bounces so i so i totally agree um i'm one of the one of the questions i wanted to ask you and i wanted to welcome angie to the broadcast thanks for thanks for joining what is the best piece of travel advice you've received thus far that ultimately we cannot be afraid to travel even if it means traveling alone um, a lot of us, we want to do things and we want to go places, but a lot of times we're dependent on other people. And I remember joining a few travel groups and I started noticing a popular theme and that was solo travel. Um, and that they said, look, you have to eventually get to the place that you are willing to go, even if it means going by yourself. And I want to say, don't let others hinder you from experiencing the world. There's, like I said, there's a whole big world out there. And yes, what we like, is it better? It is two better than one, of course. But at the end of the day, do not let that stop you from living your life. It's your life, so live it. And I think, like I said, the best piece of advice is not, don't be afraid if you have to go solo because a lot of them, let me tell you, they've gotten to the place where they've gone solo so much that they would prefer it because <laughs> it, it gives them they're able to be more free and more up and go when they want they when they please so right and 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 i agree and there are opportunities it's good to go with a, uh, through a travel agency or a travel consultant that so they can kind of tell you okay yes you can travel solo here are some places some environments where you'll be fine and mm -hmm. kind of steer you away from because if you go online and you're just looking at, at uh, one of the online sites, you might pick some place that sounds good, but in reality, it's not in a good area. You're traveling by yourself and things like that. So, as I, if you don't mind, I like to add to that as well, too. Okay. Go ahead. Um, even when we, so I not only have the travel, my best friend was a travel planner, but also, again, when we got there, our country host dealt with travel as well. And he, because he, lived there and was a native there, then he was able to direct us. And he was able to say, you know, be careful with eating there or be careful. You know, he, he knew the places where to go. And that made it a lot easy for us to, and it made, it made it a more enjoyable experience. You can relax and, and enjoy right. and not, not be fretful. Okay. So Joyce, thank you so much you. for for joining and sharing your Ghana adventure. And if you want to hear more about uh, Joy's adventure and beyond the just hearing about it, some of the love, the beautiful photographs that she uh, is in and took while she was there, you want to go to travelwitheva.com and let me go into the agenda. Show. You want to go to travelwitheva.com and uh, Joy shares her uh experience experience there so and if you know someone who's maybe interested in going to ghana or um or maybe it's, maybe it's a young person and they are doing a project on ghana share uh share out the share the broadcast share the love and you know let them know that there's a lot of broadcasts and that there's also an article on Ghana and some beautiful pictures. So uh, I wanted to share that. And um, Joy, how can people get in touch with you? So through Facebook and Instagram, you guys can reach me at a life of joy 29. 
And if you want to find me on YouTube, you can find me through searching Joy Medina on YouTube. Okay. And as you know, I'm a group uh, uh, travel event specialist. I help you to have worry-free vacations and conferences. And if you're interested in a group vacation, maybe you're interested in doing a, uh, have friends and you want to go to Ghana, or uh, we have a South Africa trip coming up and a girlfriend's trip, um, I'm going to ask uh, Danita to put those uh, links in the comments. And welcome to the broadcast, Robert. And Robert uh, was with me in Ghana. So you're going to have to check on the replay to hear uh, Joy's experience. And some of it mirrors our experiences. But thanks so much for joining. But if you're interested in doing the group, uh, you can reach, you can um, fill out the questionnaire at group.travelwitheva.com and then set up a, a complimentary consultation at schedule.travelwitheva.com uh, and see if we're a good match to, to, to work together. And as I mentioned on a previous broad, uh, broadcast, we have some, I have some trips coming up that I'm really excited about. We're almost ready to pull the trigger on the South Africa the uh, South Africa adventure. Uh, so if you are interested, um, I'm going to let put that on the screen, and it'll also be in the comments for you to link link to um, South Africa if you have an interest. Put your name on there. Um, probably by the end of the week, we'll have the flyers out and the information for that. And we're setting up the web the website as we speak. And if you are in, and this for October of 2020, if you're interested in getting together with your girlfriends, we have a girlfriend getaway, and um, that'll be in, the link will be in the comments also for the girlfriend getaway. So again, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, join us on Travel Tuesday. Uh, again, thank you, Joy. And you're welcome. It means thank you and treat. Oh, say it again. I, I was talking about Madase. Madase. So Madase. Uh, and I wanted to I always like to end the broadcast with telling you to uh, have a blessed day, evening, um, or night where you're at. And do take time to be a blessing for someone else. So bye for now. <laughs>